Well, hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two different types of tankless water heaters. You've got a condensing water heater and a non-condensing water heater. Uh, now, what's the difference there? I have homeowners ask me all the time. Uh, I have homeowners call in and say, hey, every time I run my water heater, I've got a little drip of water coming out of this tube at the bottom. What's that all about? I think I've got a leak. Well, no, you probably don't have a leak. You probably have a condensing unit. It's kind of like an air conditioner. Uh, what it is is an energy rating and we have a new scale out there it's called uh, the UEF which is the uniform energy factor and there's a whole lot of stuff involved in this uh, there's a big giant equation here uh, if you are a mathematician and you want to try to figure this thing out uh, go for it <laughs> but it's kind of based off of a bunch of different factors and it's a 24-hour period and they they run water uh, but it, it basically gives you something to tell you how efficient a water heater is or say a washing machine, a dishwasher, or a clothes dryer. Um, so to kind of get a little more idea of what's going on here, I'm going to take us over here we're going to talk uh, about the old conventional water heater first. Now this is probably what a lot of people are more used to. It's the old tank style or conventional water heater. Uh, this one's a 50 gallon, this one runs off of propane, uh, of course you can also get them in natural gas. Propane is going to cost you about twice as much as natural gas, so just remember that. Now those UEF codes, those percentages, um, it says displayed in a decimal, you're not going to see a whole lot of that in the advertising when you're looking around for these water heaters uh, because they're going to tell you, oh it's glass lined, it's got this feature and this feature, it's because those uh, energy factor codes are really, really low. Uh, a heater like this, a gas tank heater, is going to get you somewhere in between 0.55 and 0.70. Uh, that's not really a good energy efficiency code. Most of your tankless water heaters are going to run somewhere around 0.8 to like 0.95. Uh, so a lot more energy efficient than these guys and you also have the electric um, water heater and they get a little bit of a higher rating on your conventional electric water heaters. Uh, it's the same factor, same scale, but it's based off of energy and stuff. Those things are going to run somewhere around 0.8 and 0.9 on that energy factor, but it's a different power supply. Uh, I'm kind of just talking about gas for now. So let's go back over here to our two water heaters and I'm going to show you the big difference on them. All right, back to our tankless water heaters here. Uh, now I have an example of each different type. I have a non-condensating and a condensating uh, tankless water heater here. Now these are different brands. They're different name brands, so they're different colors. Uh, everybody's got their own color, and they are slightly different sizes. But most tankless water heaters are pretty much the same on the inside. The components may look a little different, but they serve the same function. Now, uh, our UEFs on this, our universal energy factor, uh, your non-condensating, this particular one here, uh, is going to land right about uh, 0 0.82, which is a lot higher than that conventional tank style. Uh, this one over here, which is the condensating, it's going to land right about 0 0.95, which is a lot better than all of them. Uh, this, the condensating ones are the most efficient water heaters pretty much out there that you can get right now. Um, so what makes that happen? What makes these different? All right, well, let's open them up. We'll start with this non-condensating one first. And uh, just some of your basic components here. Now, pretty much all water heaters, tankless water heaters, have these basic components. You're going to have your motherboard. Uh, that's the little computer uh, brain right there. That tells it when to turn on and when to do what it needs to do. Uh, they're all going to have some form of circuit board, some form of motherboard. Uh, the next thing is back behind here, there's a fan motor, which is blowing air up through this to push the exhaust out. You've got a gas valve that's going to open and close to let gas in. Uh, you've got your manifold here, and that's going to distribute that gas and regulate those pressures. Above that, you have your combustion chamber. Now, this is where the fire actually is. I like to call it flame box sometimes. Uh, you have an igniter 
and you have your two flame rods, which are little rods that indicate whether it's burning or not. Now that igniter is like a charcoal grill, gas grill igniter. It just shoots a big old spark like that uh, across there, and that's how it ignites. Now it's all electric. You don't have to do anything with it. It cuts on and does it itself. These things don't have pilot lights. That's another question I get asked. There's no pilot light. It's all an electrical ignition. All right, so above your combustion chamber, you're going to have your uh, heat exchanger. Some people call that the core, copper core up here. That's where all the magic's happening. Uh, your cold water's going to come in, and it's got tubes that loop back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it's got little veins on it as the hot air rises up through there and then comes out the exhaust, it's going to heat that water. Now a lot of people think that, oh I got my controller over here set at 120, uh, that's going to make 120 degree water. No, actually that's running at a lot higher temperatures than 120. It's got another little pipe down here that uh, it lets cold water come back into a, a bypass. It mixes the water back together to get that desired 120 or whatever you've got it set at, 130, 140. Uh, water temperature right here at the base where it's actually coming out the water heater. So this water when it leaves that is actually going to be hotter than that desired temperature and it's going to mix a little cold back with it to temper it down. Uh, but since this heat exchanger is sitting right on top of here, hot gas is going up, any kind of moisture or anything that would get in there is being blown out the front. Sometimes on uh, like a really damp day, like a rainy day or whatever, you might see steam just just blowing out of that. And that's perfectly normal for that to happen, just to have some little steam coming out of it. Because it's burning that moisture off in there. That's why it's non-condensating. It's cooking that moisture out and blowing it back out into the air. But that's basically how this one works. So let's go over to this other guy here, open him up. Uh, same basic components here too. You've got a motherboard. Now this one's a lot bigger uh, because this one has the onboard uh, controller where you can run the temperature up and down and it's got the little display that should be flashing 120. This one doesn't have an external controller, uh, which I think is kind of neat. It's all contained. Uh, behind here, you're going to have your fan back up in here. You're going to have gas valve. Uh, over here and then of course your gas manifold works just the same uh, and then above that is your uh, combustion chamber where all your flame is you've got your electrical niter you've got your flame rod and your little sight glass that you can look in and see if it's burning and then above that you've got um, your heat exchanger your little copper core it's copper in here too just like that one they've got little ceramic heaters that'll kick on when you're not using it, if it gets too cold, to um, keep that thing from freezing. Now, here's the big difference. Above that is a secondary heat exchanger, and it's stainless steel. Uh, and what it's doing is preheating that water with the exhaust. The heat coming up through this one is just the same as that. It's going to be hotter than whatever you've got it set at. Uh, and it's going to be burning the moisture off, but when it gets up to here, that is going to be 60, 65 degree water, cold water coming in from uh, under your house or whatever, out of the road, or it could be a well. Um, and so that's cold water coming into that exhaust. This exhaust is going to be a lot cooler than this exhaust. But what happens when you preheat that water, yes, it's energy efficient, yes, it's great, but you create condensate. It's just like an air conditioner, an air conditioner on a house or an air conditioner on your car. It's got to have a little bit of water dripping off of it. And that's perfectly normal, perfectly fine. It's got a little drain over here that picks that water up, a little pan that catches that water, and it puts it down into here, which is kind of like a P-trap. It's a little thing that holds the water. They call it a neutralizer because uh, this uh, condensate is actually a little bit acidic. It's not acidic enough to burn through anything. Uh, but then it's going to run down and there's actually a hookup for a little tube down here. So if you've got one of these, you're going to have two pipes hanging down at the bottom. One's for your relief and one's your condensate line. Most of the time your condensate line is smaller. It's going to be a half inch. So when this thing is running, it's going to build condensate and you're going to have a little bit of water drip, 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 dripping out of the bottom. Perfectly normal. Uh, now like I said, that water is acidic. so. Uh, it might kill your grass right there underneath because these are external heaters. 
It might kill that grass right down there underneath, but I've heard that rose bushes absolutely love it. So, of course, you want to watch out for having bushes or anything around these. You don't want them to get up around here and start causing problems. But that's basically it. Uh, that secondary heat exchanger is what is giving you that higher energy efficient rating. Now, something I have noticed when people go, I thought these things were going to be so much better uh, on uh, their energy consumption. Well, they are. It's just with a tankless water heater, you don't ever have to run, worry about running out of hot water. It's not a tank holding 50 gallons. You can make as much hot water with this thing as you want to. It's just going to keep running, keep burning. So I've noticed that a lot of people, when they have tankless, they say stay in the showers longer, uh, they wash more dishes, they use more hot water. So, uh, because you're not going to run out. And that's kind of what happens to your efficiency. It's, it's really, it's wild. But I mean, who doesn't want to take a long shower? So that's pretty much it. Uh, this one's more efficient because it's got that second heat exchanger. Uh, really neat thing. Uh, I really like these. And there's no difference in the install. Just, you got to hook that little tube up. Now, if you have an interior one, which I highly recommend those because it keeps it out of the bugs and the sunshine and the weather and elements and all that, but you do have to run a dedicated condensate line for this one. You can't tie it into the relief because if that relief were ever to open up, it's going to blow back up that condensate line, fill that box up, flood your water heater out. You don't want that to happen. Uh, if you got any more questions, let me know. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.